Hey everyone, this is Jenny from Homestead Corner and today I wanted to talk about handling waste in an emergency situation. Ooh, it is hot, hot, hot here today. My goodness. The humidity is really high and everything is like super sticky, yucky. <laughs> I love the cooler weather and I'll tell you, I'm excited about fall. When you grow your own food, it is so, so busy during the summertime and everything else that goes along with it. I just, fall is, I can kick back and relax for a few minutes and I just, I can't wait. <laughs> but today I thought it was really important to go over some of the things we can do with our waste, human waste and our trash during an emergency. We love having flushable toilets, running water, all that great stuff. I mean, who doesn't love that? Trash pickup or like, we don't have that here, but we do take it to the dump and they dispose of it, the transfer station, and you can do all your recyclables and stuff there, which is wonderful. And I love that we have that, but in an emergency, you're not going to be able to do things the same way unfortunately. If the water goes down, the grid goes down. If you have not got running water and you cannot flush your toilet, you've got to have an alternative for your waste. And I try to do things as inexpensively as possible, but still something that is quality and going to last. I don't want to do something that's going to fall apart in five minutes. So. You know, we need it to last, but as inexpensive as possible. When you have a big family, you've got to follow a budget in order to make it, and that's just how it is. So, for emergency toilet, we have found <clears throat> the easiest thing is a five gallon bucket. Really, it is the easiest thing. You can line this with a trash bag, plastic bag, whatever you want if you want to do it that way. And then you could do the pool noodle on top, which you can get for about a buck, which is really inexpensive. And, but you can also use like a pipe insulation, those foam insulators that go on your copper pipes for your water system inside. You can put those on the top too. The pool noodle is a little bit softer, but I found at Walmart for 12 bucks, you can get this handy dandy toilet seat. And I think it's like Ozark Trail. And they are literally $11.97, I think I paid for this, which I think is great. The toilet seat, it has a ridge in here. Woo -hoo. Um, and it just fits right on the bucket. You just slide it right on and it snaps right on the bucket so it won't come off and it's you can pick it up by the seat which is great and the lid has a little latch up here and it snaps closed so then you have got your little toilet um, this is great for in the house if the grid is down you have no water you have got this and then you've got to dispose of your waste after um, there are a bunch of different ways to do that as well. We find that composting works the best. My parents had a compost toilet for years because they had a house that was on a hand dug well. So they really had to be careful of the amount of water that they did use in the house. So the showers were short, no extra flushing for no reason. You really had to be careful with the water and we would bring water in for drinking and things like that. That's just how it was and you know, it is what it is. So, but the compost toilet was really nice because you know, we would just keep a bucket like this next to it, next to the toilet with leaves, sawdust, grass clippings, whatever this stuff is free and you could get it outside in the park in your yard wherever um and just and then once you use the toilet in your compost composting toilet just put a layer on top i know a lot of people have mentioned kitty litter works really well but i'm not sure how that works if you're going to compost it 
because um, you will use that soil once it's all composted and it does make wonderful garden soil. So you can, once you use the bucket, just put a little, sprinkle your grass clippings or leaves or pine needles. Um, sawdust works wonderfully as well. And then dump it into the compost bin, which we just use a pile. It's not anything fancy. You just chuck everything on the pile, turn it over once in a while. And it just, uh, human waste, you definitely want that to sit at least two years before you use that in your garden. So, you know, make different piles so you know this one's the oldest one, that one's going to be ready to use in two years. This is one we're working on. We don't want to use this in the garden. <laughs> so that's one great way that you can go about it. If you are, if you don't have a bucket system or you don't have a compost area, you can dig a hole and bury your waste in the ground. Um, with the composting, you can put the toilet paper in there. Um, it's it's going to break down with it. Some people will put that separate and then they will burn it, the toilet paper. Um, you can also use like a flannel rag for, you know, family cloth, I think they call it, and soak it in a bleach bucket. Have a couple of extra buckets, one with a bleach water solution after you use it throw the rag in there and let it soak and then you can clean it after it soaks for so long but those are just some ideas and inexpensive easy ways to take care of that and if you're going to dig a hole to bury your waste in I I would say you know 8 to 12 inches deep and then cover it make sure you cover it back over really good you don't want animals getting into it you don't really want it on top of the soil so it because if animals do get into it it's going to cause some problems the compost is nice because you can kind of put it off to the side and you know put a fence around it or whatever if you need to if you have animals that would get into it um so that is a great way to go with the toileting and on your household trash you in an emergency situation you really want to be careful you do not want to be putting your trash outside on the curb to be collected you don't want to let it pile up outside when people see that you've got all this trash and empty food containers they know that you have food and if you've got that much then they're going to come looking for some so i think it's important to be very conscious about your trash in your home in an emergency situation. We have a fire pit in the backyard and I know not everybody has that accessible, but so we are able to burn paper products, things like that, boxes, um, anything like that, we can burn it and dispose of it. And there's no, it's not laying around, no one is going to see it cans glass bottles things like that reuse as much as you can find another purpose for it you know hold your your nails in a coffee can or something keep those things in you know into a use it for something else anything that you can think of really and then you know your plastic bags and things you want to you know reuse those as much as you can throw away as little as possible and your trash bags themselves if it's a long-term situation that the grid is down or it's an emergency there's no food for people to eat things like that you want to hold on to those trash bags don't just take the trash bag out and burn it because dump the stuff out keep the trash bag as long as you can because you're gonna run out eventually you want to make sure you have plenty of trash bags there to continue as far as like plastics and things like that normally I personally would not recommend burning those but after a while you may have so many that you have got to get rid of them somehow and you know if you got to burn it you got to burn it got to do what you got to do to keep yourself and your family safe but you know i know it's not good for the environment and on a regular everyday basis no way would i do that but in an emergency 
you've got to dispose of stuff and burning it is the easiest way to make it go away and you don't want your trash outside you don't want anyone else seeing what you're doing digging through your trash and knowing any of your business Ooh, she's got freeze-dried food let's go get some you know you got to think about that stuff and even if you're in the country or the city this can still be a problem I know you I think you could pay for trash pickup even way out where we live and stuff but you know and people do do it I see trash on the side of the road once in a while so if someone wanted to dig through it they could so you want to make sure to keep your family safe and you know you want to keep your house clean even in emergency and keep that trash you know you got to keep it kind of organized and out of there <laughs> you got to get rid of it and if the transfer stations not open even if it is you want to be really careful with people watching you follow you home anything like that so definitely it is a challenge and getting a plan in action of how you're going to handle your trash I think is really important because it can definitely affect your safety if people think that you've got all this stuff in your house even if you only had one can of freeze-dried food and they see it they might think oh my god she must have hundreds more you know you just want to be careful and make sure that you can keep you and your family safe and clean and healthy and before we go today I just wanted to say if we could all send out a little prayer or a love and light or something to our our fellow Americans in Tennessee that are just struggling with this flooding people have died people are displaced this is just awful our Americans over in Afghanistan and the Afghans people I mean this is just a horrible predicament all around the world there is so much chaos right now sending out a prayer for peace and hopefully everybody is okay and safe and my goodness it's just so much and you know if you're not a prayer person you know love and light light a candle for them whatever it is you do wish peace and love our country and our world really needs this right now it is such a disaster and that is it for today if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe i'll see you in the next video bye